Hello guys and gals, and welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we take a look at a Contra Creep pasta, first time we've done one actually, and it's a pretty lengthy one, so you know, grab something to eat or drink and uh, get under the covers, because this is a pretty uh, lengthy creep pasta. And uh, for being the first Contra one we've done, we get to experience the spookiness of Contra. You know, unfold right before our eyes for the first time, seeing uh, how it's going to play out. And again, it's pretty lengthy, but that being so, let's get right into this creep pasta titled Contra Hardcore. It all started when I received a PM on my YouTube. I'm a Let's Player, so to speak. I do playthroughs and Let's Plays of games and just random videos involving games as well. I checked my YouTube one day to find that I had an inbox message from someone who, for the sake of this tale and the video accompanying the story, shall be known as a messenger. The title was called Contra Hardcore. Two things entered my mind. First, dumbass spelled Hardcorps wrong, and two, I had already done a Let's Play of Contra Hardcorps. Prepared to reply with a simple copy and paste link to my Let's Play Contra Hardcorps playlist, I opened the message, but to my surprise it read, Hi, can you do a Let's Play of Contra 3? Thanks. The lack of grammatical correction in the message made, my, made the inner writer and me I want to punch this guy in the face, but I figured what the fuck, let's play some Contra 3. I had already had ZSNES on my computer, but not Contra 3, so a quick Google search and a few seconds later I had the ROM downloaded and was ready to go. I turned on Fraps, put my headset on so I could do my commentary like normal, and fired up the emulator. What's up everybody, it's Dante Fido here. I started all my videos with this intro, it's kind of my signature thing. And I got a special request to do a Let's Play of Contra 3, The Alien Wars. So I'm going to go ahead and fire it up, and we're going to start doing this. I said as I navigated my way through the ROMs, which I only had about two at the time, Contra 3 and Super Mario World. I let out a loud sigh as the Konami symbol started to appear. God, how I hated this game. Don't get me wrong, I, I fucking love Contra, but Contra 3, mmm, the game was just stupidly fucking difficult. Anyone who's played it can back me up on that. Hi, woo, shit. The Konami symbol had made the uh, usual chime, uh, it does, but my volume was turned up way too loud. I turned it down and prepared for the inevitable. That was loud. I have not played the game in so long, and I remember it being so fucking hard too. Just waiting at a black screen for the game to start, I let out another exasperated sigh. I, in all honesty, really don't want to play this game, but someone has a request. It's my job to see it through. I really, I, I can't believe I'm going to fucking do this. This game is going to kick my ass so bad. Famous last words, I suppose. The sound for the intro was starting to kick in, and I could see the city which appeared to be fine. But I knew that city was about to be turned to ruin by the scariest fuck alien in the sky. That's a fucked up town, I said as the explosion. Destroyed the city. Went off. God, I hate that face, man. That thing is like, ugh. They used to scare the shit out of me when I was a kid. No joke. We all have things that frighten us as kids. For example, I still hate the movie It and Clowns. They can both die in hell, but that's something else I hate. It's that goddamn alien face. I remember watching my brother play through Contra 3 on the SNES back in the day. After seeing that face for the first time, though, it would haunt me for quite a while. Considering at the time I was five years old, I believe, you'd be scared of something like that too. It didn't help that music was creepy as fuck also. And did I say that in the last video I made of this? I don't remember if I did or not. I did a short little uh, attempt of Contra 3 like way back in the day, but let's attack aggressively. Yeah, no shit. No, let's attack passively. That I know I said. Simply talking my way through the introduction as there was, you know, it wasn't any voiceovers to cut off in these older games, I went to the options and uh, set the difficulty to easy and gave myself seven lives, which even still the game was quite difficult. Anyways, alright, I'm gonna go to options and I'm gonna switch this shit because god this game is so fucking hard. We're gonna go to, um, there we go, seven lives and on easy. Thank you, we'll leave it at that. Um, what the fuck? I was pressing start, or at least, I think it's start. I set up my controller for the ZSNES emulator, I'm pretty damn sure I was hitting the right button, but the screen just stayed at the title. Start? Go? The fuck? Suddenly the cursor began to move on its own. Whoa, 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 what the fuck? It was moving up and repeating itself, as if it was being pressed rapidly. The cursor stopped on option and selected it. What the fuck was going on? The f... Like, I'm not controlling this right now. The cursor was moving even faster now as it selected player, level, sound, and exit. What? The cursor stopped on player and changed my seven lives to three. A chill went down my spine. Why was this happening? What? The cursor moved to level and began to rapidly scroll through the options of easy, normal, and hard, and it stopped on hard. Fuck, I said seeing the game change the difficulty to what was a certain doom for me. 
shit. I spoke quietly. Not from the game difficulty and lack of lives I had now been chosen with, but the realization of the entire situation that was unfolding. I had finally put two and two together. This had to be a virus. That fucking messenger told me to play Contra 3, and now this shit is happening? He had to have put a virus on my computer. My thoughts suddenly started spinning. How destroyed was my computer already if I tried to close the game? Would it ruin everything? I decided the only thing to do was to see this through. Despite every bone in my body telling me to just turn the computer off, turn it back on and hope that nothing was affected, I had to see what was in store for me. You read all these stories and think when the scary shit happens, just turn off the game, but curiosity really does get the better of you. You're just dying to know what happens next, and in this case, I don't want my computer blowing up on me or something because I failed to fulfill a request. Hmm, okay. Well, I guess I'm gonna have three lives I'm gonna go through the game on hard, I said trying to shrug this off. Seeing the red fraps number in the corner, I was still recording. Might as well make the best of the situation, right? Okay, um, stage one. I had never even bothered to try this game on hard, so I really had no idea what was in store for me. I don't even know what the controls are. I set up the buttons in my ZSNES emulator, yes, but couldn't tell which one did what till I was playing the game. Poor preparation on my part, I suppose. Okay, that switches, that does that. I said as I started hitting buttons, but suddenly, I used one of my powerful grenades. Ah, shit. Well, there... Well, that used my bomb, I guess. Making a jump in the air and firing, I begin the level. Let's fucking do this shit, then. The capsule floated overhead, and I took it out, grabbing the shield as well as another bomb. Two more capsules buzzed over me, and I acquired the spray gun, arguably the best gun in the game. Almost as soon as I obtained it, the spray gun was lost from me, taking a bullet to the chest, my character doing a backflip death animation in a yell of pain. All right, come on, I said as I respawned. About a second after landing, a turret appeared on the floor, and while trying to dodge the bullets it was firing, I instead landed on one. Another life gone. Shit, kicking my ass, I said as I respawned a third time. This time I took the turret out, made my way past a few enemies, and took out another turret. Okay, we're doing pretty good. There's a fuck. Just had to say something. I took another bullet to the chest, and with a final death animation, the screen turned to black. And that's game over, all right? Continue? Got more continues? I pressed start and began again, stage one. All right, here we go. Once again, I got a bit more comfortable now, picking up the shield, bomb, and the spray gun without getting hit. Okay, spray gun, that's a plus. I took out the turret again and a few other enemies, but the alien on top firing at me was just shooting too fast. Dodging his bullets as best as I could, I finally got hit at the same time I killed him. Whew, fuck. I said as I pressed on, killing its hurt and a few enemies in my way, hitting capsules, one with an H on it, but it was out of reach, and the other one was an L. Fuck that gun, nobody wants the laser. No one wants the laser, that's a shitty weapon. Holy fuck, the dog came after me. What the fuck, they normally do that! I don't remember that shit, oh, fuck! There were just too many enemies on screen, and I suffered my second death for this continue. Yeah, that was. That was just screams, I'm dead right there. I kept going on my last life now. I looked down enemy after enemy, reaching the furthest I'd gotten so far, where the wall tank, for lack of a better term, awaited. One soldier on top was firing extremely fast, and while I was able to take him out, one of his stray bullets caught me in the foot, ending my game. Oh my god, oh sweet, I actually made it this far, holy shit, damn, that dude is firing, like, yeah, and he shot me in the foot, awesome. The screen faded to black, again, game over, this wasn't a good start for me, let's be honest. Stage 1. I began to think I was never going to see Stage 2. This was proven to be hopeless. I did the same routine as before, shield, bomb, spray gun. This time I was hit by another guy on the top platform where I literally jumped into his bullet. Shit, god damn it! I could hear the frustration in my voice now. Another death only a few moments later. I hit the H capsule and grabbed the homing missiles. In this case, it was a pretty good weapon. It could fire in any direction I want and it would take out my targets for me. Too bad it didn't help. I don't want the laser, that gun sucks, homing, fuck, damn it. As if somehow, spared from my inevitable defeat, I got an extra life, giving me one more chance before this game over. Well, I was going to say homing missiles were working awesome and I'm dead again. The extra life wasted. I reached my third game over, let out a sigh, and this was becoming annoying. Continue too. Upon seeing this, I figured it was time to do something about this shit. I tried moving to end, nothing happened. I tried hitting escape so I could exit out of the emulator. I, I mean, I'm done with it, but still nothing. It's like my keyboard doesn't respond. Um, I can't. It's not letting me do anything. I'm trying to end or something, and it just... It, it doesn't let me do anything but continue. I said to my audience, a tone of defeat in my voice. Well, time to go die again, I thought. Well, I guess I'm uh, gonna keep going. 
I said, shield, bomb, spray gun. I progressed a little bit further than normal before my first death. Damn it. Extra life, yay! Good fucking god, god damn it, yes! There was just way too much shit coming at me on screen. Death was only a matter of time at that point. Another the respawn and I moved on. My god, that guy shoots fast. Another to death. I reached the tank wall and was ready to do this time or not. As soon as I got into view, I used a bomb, but a bullet from the guy at the top platform got me again, giving me a fourth game over. It only, uh, I, if only it worked out that, you know, out like that, continue one was at the end. I, I couldn't remember if there was a continue zero that would give me one more attempt, but, I don't know, it's not like if it mattered. And then I died before I could use it, so, okay, this is the last uh, attempt. Maybe, I don't know. Guess we'll find out what happens. I said as usual, getting the power-ups, killing zombies. I couldn't even see the bullet that would hit me. And I was there, it was like I just died, I guess, for no reason, you know? After grabbing the homing missiles, another quick death. I mean, this was my last life, how long did I have? You know, I figured, fuck it. And when the L capsule flew overhead, I shot it and let it drop on me. You know, I was using the laser now, the most powerful gun in the game, but, you know, also the slowest. Basically useless in a game where you need to shoot as fast as possible to kill every frickin' enemy there is. Fuck it, let's get the laser, why not? It's actually kind of working, I said. And it was, I, you know, I was making decent progress until, you know, one of those damn, uh, you know, dogs chased me into that fucking crazy mob of enemies from earlier. You know, trying to avoid the dog, I jumped straight into the enemy on the platform, you know, ending the game. I let her another sigh as the screen changed to black. Game over. And that's it? Like, what the fuck? Stage one. The game had started over, and I began the level again. Another death almost instantly, too. Was the game gonna make me play this on hard difficulty over and over until I finally beat it? Ain't nobody got time for that. I really didn't want to do this shit over and over. I kept going, you know, got the spray gun, but I noticed something. I got to the part where the dogs chase after you, but they didn't. They just simply look at the screen, you know, rather creepily, I might add. You know, there weren't any obstacles anymore, the part with all the enemies everywhere I, I took out with one quick shot of the spread gun. You know, it had never been this easy before. You know, well, this isn't nearly as hard as I, uh, it was just a second ago. I think either I'm in the zone now, like a boss, or somehow the difficulty has been changed, I think. I said. I was at the tank wall, and I was destroying it quickly with the spray gun still armed, and within moments, it was defeated. It didn't let me do anything. It just took me straight back into the game, so I tried to explain to my viewers, as well as trying to explain to myself what was going on. I jumped in the tank with a bitch and missile launcher. Fortunately, you couldn't be hurt when in this vehicle. I used the tank to get through the next part of the level where you face another one of those tank walls, but thanks to the power of the tank, you kill it in one hit, but your tank's also destroyed. Eh, fun while it lasted. Damn it! I hate this gun, these grenades fucking suck! As soon as I jumped out of the destroyed tank, I was hit by a turret making me lose my spray gun and picking up the grenade launcher, which was powerful, but had a very slow rate of fire and a short range. Good for bosses, shitty in the actual game though. I had shot down two more bombs and a shield, which kept me protected while I just walked through the flames shooting out of the ground, not needing to jump over them anymore. While the laser has the slowest rate of fire in any gun in the game, it's only for as long as the laser is on the screen, and since it travels so slow, it fires slow. But if, for example, you fire at the edge of the screen, it'll Fire fast as hell, as the beam is only on the screen for a moment, so getting up in the boss's face makes the laser disappear almost instantly, meaning you can literally kill the guy in about, you know, three seconds, with the laser. Handy as hell. Um, uh, looking for- oh shit. Now that was the wrong button. I said as I tried to switch weapons, but I ended up using a bomb instead. Damn controls. Yay! Homing missiles! Don't want the sea, cause the sea is crap. Here's where the plane sets everything on fire. The plane flies overhead as I stood atop a platform that kept me safe, the plane burning everything on the ground for a good 13 seconds before a fire erupted from the floor, making this a bit more challenging now as touching the ground meant you know, instant death. Barely just avoiding flames and finally reaching near the end, a capsule flew overhead and I shot it. Grabbing it, I once again had the spray gun. Spray gun, fuck yeah, switch back to my laser in case I fuck up and die right here. I'll get rid of this, uh, I'll get rid of that instead of the spray gun, just saying. Yeah, I don't think I can grab that. Mm, fuck it. As the fire disappeared and I grabbed, jumped back onto the ground, a castle floated over me and I shot it with my spray gun. But it appeared to land just outside of range. It looked like it was another bomb anyways, and I already had two, so that'd be fine. Another capsule went by, also a bomb, which I grabbed, giving me about three now. The final boss was going down. <laughs> 
Here comes a giant turtle boss guy. Anyone else think they path, uh, they based the final boss of Metroid Other M on this guy? Because I think they did. Literally, the boss from Metroid Other M looks exactly like this, except he has to eat you when you lay a power bomb in the throat. Spoilers? Sorry, Metroid fans. What's with this guy? Fucking die soon. I'd already used about three of my bombs on this dude, and was still shooting away at him. I hate that. Oh, he's a fire in his laser. I said as he charged a beam attack and fired it in similar fashion. Still shooting, this guy was durable as hell. Not surprising though, he is a turtle thing. Cool, I got an extra life, I spoke, hearing the chime indicating I now had three lives. The turtle's body had burst into flames and he began to shake up and down, the usual death animation, but something was different, it kept repeating over and over. You yeah, had the game glitched up? Figured this would happen as soon as I actually get somewhere. Uh, what the fuck? I don't remember this lasting this long. Okay, alright, there it goes. Eventually the screen faded to black and the Contra level complete music had played. Alright, stage two, let's fucking do this shit. Woo! I let out a sigh of relief, more or less. It had felt like hours since I'd started playing the game and I was glad to finally be rid of the damn level. Suddenly Fang from Contra Hard Corps jumped onto the screen from the intro of the game. And as the screen faded from white, I was now in the first level of Contra Hard Corps. What the fuck is this? Hardcore? What the- What is this? As a vehicle you're in crash onto the side of a car, you fly out the front window like normal. For a split second, the alien race from Contra 3 appeared on screen, along with the deep pitched noise for a second as well. What words can I use to express this amount of fear coursing through my body at the moment? Let's recap. In a matter of about 5 seconds, I was now playing a different game, on a different console, and that goddamn alien face from the previous game I was playing before had now popped on my screen in a split second on a game where that shit shouldn't even happen. If this was still a virus, then holy shit it was professional. How the hell was it making me play Contra Hardcorps on a ZSNES emulator? It's a Genesis game. Okay, um, uh, I just, I'm just gonna keep on playing, I'm gonna pretend this shit just didn't happen, my god. I was truly terrified at this point. I mean, what else was gonna happen? Uh, did anyone else see that shit? I asked rhetorically. I continued my way through the level, picking up capsules A and D for Ray, which were the rapid-fire laser and the homing missiles. As I blew up the tanker that was blocking the way, the screen flashed white, and at the same time, the alien face appeared again. Okay. Fuck. This really isn't cool. I don't know what's going on. Is Am I using ZSNES? Is this even a- This is a Sega game! I don't know how this is possible. I defeat the two mini-bosses and continue on. I had played this game hundreds of times, way more than I played Contra 3, so getting through this game was a breeze for me, assuming it was still the same game. I don't even know if it- I don't even know what I was in for now, though, to be honest. I guess I'm playing Contra Hardcore now. I don't even wanna- I don't even wanna know how this is happening. With the second mini-boss defeated, it crashed into a building, and I climbed up, reaching the third mini-boss. You could see it in the background, and as it fired a laser, and set the background ablaze. It leapt into the air. As soon as it did, the alien face popped up again. My god, why does it keep doing that? God, that shit is ugh! It was seriously unnerving every time that happened. As I continued to fight the boss, he just kept bouncing up and down like he normally does, but more times than before. I mean, I, I defeated the boss and grabbed capsules B and C, which now gave me access to all of Ray's weapons. Personally, I like Fang's arsenal the best, but well, I, I mean, I'd have to make do with Ray's equipment at this point. I jump from platform to platform and onto the spinning thing that comes alive and flies down, which is then destroyed by the unmanned robot. But when it blew up, something totally unexpected happened. The colors from the explosion reversed, which was normal, but they kept glitching out for a, you know, a couple seconds, and then the alien face appeared at the end. Honestly, seeing the game freak out like that was more amusing than, you know, really scary. As the boss jumped from uh, platform to platform and then right into the middle, I, for unknown reasons, ran right into the middle, making the boss land right on top of me, instantly killing me. I had now lost my heat seeker missiles. As the boss exploded and Dead Eye Joe came leaping out, he did that creepy laugh he does, and as the laugh ended, the alien face popped up on the screen. Unlike the other Contra games, this one actually let you pick your next level, and to an extent, the ending as well. And with that, the stage clear music played and the screen blacked out. Going to the next level, research center by the way, where Ray was riding up on a motorcycle type thing, as he started his dialogue, the alien race popped up again, and the air police showed up instantly, cutting out a few moments of speech. It appears the game is doing exactly what it wants, when it wants, that's fucking wonderful. A tanker appeared behind the air police and started shooting missiles that exploded to the edge of the screen, releasing a soldier from each. After killing the soldier, they would fall on the road and blow up the tanker. 
That was easy enough, I said as the tanker exploded. The air police took off into the sky with a, you know, where a guy with a grapple hook would grab on a part of the plane and really just be an annoying dick. After noticing the spread gun wasn't, you know, hitting enough uh, from how fast he was going, I switched to the rapid fire laser for a bit more precision positioning myself, just right after, you know, right and taking him out. But he returned with his jetpack and fired lasers, which, yeah, fair enough, are easy to dodge. Jeez, man, why won't this guy die? There he goes. Whoa! Shit the plane! Wow, that was close. I said after finally defeating the jetpack guy, which even the lasers, you know, was taking goddamn forever. Once he died, a plane arrives from above you and fires three shots, which almost hit me. After pumping that plane full of grenade rounds, it flew beneath the air police plane and set it on fire. The guy, ex you know, exclaiming, how we're going down and it'll be a rough landing. The animation where the plane crashed into the ground repeated itself several times, with the alien face popping up at the end. Honestly, I thought the whole thing looked pretty damn funny. I continued on through the door and got to the part where the doctor explains about the alien cell and how it was the alien from five years ago. Now you may remember, Contra 3 is called The Alien Wars. The game directly references Contra 3, another reason why I was playing it now. I couldn't say for sure. They make a reference to Contra 3, which was which is uh, what I was just playing, and now I'm playing this. I still don't understand how he's climbing up a wall like that, that just, I don't know, that baffles me, I said, as I controlled Ray, and made him climb up a completely vertical wall with no problem. It just looks weird when you see it. <laughs> I moved forward and made my way into the boss room. As the boss lowered its head into view, which looked a lot like a Terminator, the Contra 3 alien face popped up a few times, much more quickly than it had before. I fired heat seeker missiles into the boss and the trash that he makes. When you destroy the trash, the boss lowers, super pissed off, and turns red, and at the same time, the red alien phase appeared. The trash the boss made had flew up and out of the screen, and then landed right on me, killing Ray and making me lose my beloved Heatseeker missiles. I switched from my laser to my spread gun, giving me a wider attack range so I could hit the boss without climbing too high. This going up too high would cause his fist to hit you and kill you. Okay, I get it. There's a similarity between the guys, you know, red in that phase. It's... <laughs> cute, I said, as again the boss lower turning red and the alien face popped up. They really did look pretty similar, and as the boss created his next set of trash, it leaned to one side and then launched up, killing me and getting rid of my spray gun. Shit, I forgot it does that. And I didn't think those hands could reach up that far, as I climbed higher to use my laser gun to a better effect. I was immediately killed by the boss's hands from climbing too high, as mentioned earlier. Clearly I'm extremely bad at the game. I switched to my grenade launcher and pumped a few shots into the boss, killing him. But as he made the death animation of explosions, the alien face popped up rapidly on the screen, finally stopping as the boss exploded and the stage clear music played. And getting a sudden sense of dread as the alien face had never popped up that many times before, it wasn't a good sign. I moved on to the next level, which was in the junkyard. Stage 3. I picked up the CNA capsules which gave me the spray gun and my laser back. I started mowing down all the enemies on the motorcycles. I walked right into an enemy attack as I tried to kill him though, giving me my first game over on Contra Hardcorps. As the black game over screen appeared, so did the alien face for a split second. I guess the game isn't happy that I died right there. The face popping up. That shit's gotta mean something, there's gotta be a reason why. I said as I was at the uh, character select and forced to pick Ray again. I got through all the guys on the motorcycles and moved to the next part. Let's try this again without dying, I said as I defeated the previous enemies in the Wolf's wagons with missiles for engines. Which shooted you, by the way. Who comes up with this shit? I had gotten to the first mini-boss when the alien face appeared right before he jumped into the air. The alien face seemed to appear whenever the boss landed, and whenever he jumped out of the ground, almost as if to represent something, but I wasn't sure what. When I defeated the boss, he did the reverse color explosion and again the game glitched for a moment, with the alien face appearing at the end. Whoa, trippy. As I destroyed each of the turrets on the walls, I got my head taken off by one. Whew, that was close. I blew open the way to the next room and the game paused, saying state slot zero saved. This was a standard ZSNES function and damn save states were pretty handy. Thinking that would be breaking the rules, I didn't want to risk doing it. But it looks like the game saved it on its own, was it giving me a break for once? I would soon realize how very wrong I was. The game was playing for keeps. So it's gonna pop up at the end of every evil laugh now? Jesus. Norman cascaded an evil laugh, a bit higher pitched than Dead Eye Joe's, but the alien face appeared all the same. It also likes to pop up at the start of every boss too. I said his first boss appeared, and so did the alien face. 
I was detecting a pattern now and being able to predict when it would appear made it far less scary, as the shock value is practically none. As I fought the boss, he did a few attacks. The alien face popped up right before one of his timed attacks, and then again before another. This actually threw me off and got me killed. It was the first time that damn face had actually ever killed me. Oh, okay. God. I took out the first boss immediately after dying and moved on to the second, but the face kept popping up more often now. Fighting the second boss with that face popping up was unnerving, and I died again. Shit. Fuck. Piece of shit. Suck on that. I said as soon as I spawned, I used one of my grenades and instantly defeated the second boss. The face may be playing by different rules, but the game itself still had to go by him. As the third boss was about to move, so did the face, which made it so I couldn't tell which direction the boss was going to move, and thus got me killed again. I spawned and moved under the boss to shoot at him. All the while, the face appearing several more times till I died yet again, and that was game over. Okay, that's uh, getting really distracting now, yeah. I would soon learn just how distracting that face could be, I started. Is it? No. Just auto picked Ray for me, alright? I said as I was taken to the character select. I was hoping to pick Fang. This would be a piece of cake with him. As the first boss appeared, so did the alien face. I realized that the alien face was going to do everything it could to stop me from beating the boss, but why? I mean, why was this... Why Was this as far as the virus is programmed to even go? If I got past this, would it be over? It was... Definitely, de it was definitely determined to stop me. I mean, that was for sure. Not gonna work, though, I said, as the alien face appeared right before the first boss attacked. I'd done this fight enough times to have that timing memorized, and even with the alien face throwing me off a bit, I could still get past it. Unfortunately, it seemed the face had another plan. It backed me up into a corner and popped on the screen twice real fast, which threw me off, you know, out of, out of my whole timing and got me killed. As soon as I spawned again, the first boss was dead and the second appeared. The alien face now began to appear about every other second, and it was starting to get me, you know, it a bit. I admit. I had successfully defeated the second boss without losing a life, and the alien face, as if responding to my victory, stepped things up a notch. When the third boss appeared, the alien face now popped up several times a second. I mean, like, rapidly over and over until I died. There wasn't even any way to play the game like this. Holy fucking shit, stop! I told the game, and surprisingly it did, with the exception of one final face popping up. Is that it? Did it stop? I asked, seeing the face not pop up anymore when the boss made his next attack. Could the game hear me? Anyone that's seen my let's plays knows I use a headset and do commentary. Was this virus able to react to the words I said while I was playing the game? Realizing this, I shouted the only thing that was going to get... You know, that was going through my mind at the time, and had been this entire time. What the fuck? As soon as I said that, the game glitched up and took me to the character select screen, and it was now on Fang. Whoa, shit. If this was the game's way of talking back to me, I was officially terrified now. I asked, what the fuck? And the game picked a character whose reply is, it's payback time. I suddenly began to think of all the people I actually knew in real life that could pull something like this off. Have I wronged someone and not even known about it? Was it someone I didn't even know? The game suddenly switched to a different level, one of the very last ones, and I was playing as Fang. You know, finally some good news. I was at last playing as Fang and I fell right at home. I had weapons A, B, C, and one bomb. I started taking out every enemy in my path. Fang's A weapon was a widespread rapid fire attack that was one of the most powerful in the game. In my honest opinion, the best weapon in the game. Dead Eye Joe appeared. The final time you fight him, he makes some kind of a weird karate sound, which I attempt to mimic. The first, uh, the, the fight had began, and I had fired off a bomb, dealing terrible, terrible damage to all four of that machine's legs. I switched to my B weapon, also one of the powerful, you know, guns in the game, and blew off one of Dead Eye Joe's legs. Changing how the fight works now, so that uh, he bounces around the room. Switching back to my A gun kept him at a far enough distance that I couldn't be hurt and I could just sit back and take him out. Dead Eye Joe now did a move where he'd appear where you, uh, where you have to bounce up and down. And how do you avoid the attack? Dodge. A simple slide move every time he got near me, and within moments Dead Eye Joe was defeated once and for all. The game started to slow down and get choppy, repeating a few sounds as Colonel Bahamut destroyed Dead Eye Joe. Suddenly, the alien face had appeared. The first time I had seen it for that level, in fact, and the game returned it back to normal. Speed. Two capsules went by overhead and I got weapons A and D, which both I already had, but oh well, bonus points, right? I climbed up the ramp and made my way to the final battle with Colonel Bahamut. The Colonel said his usual speech and then transformed. The fight was about to begin. 
Fortunately, this is like the easiest boss ever. 2, 1, slide. The boss had a countdown attack at 3, 2, 1, and then you rush towards. The easiest way to avoid it is to uh, time a slide move when he charges, and you'll pass right through it, as I did several times. I'm pretty sure that they stole this character from Dragon Ball Z, 2, 1, slide. The guy has a glowing aura like a Super Saiyan. He jumps in the air and does this energy ball volley in the same fashion and shoots out a Kamehameha beam thing. It doesn't look like one, but the attack animation he does is almost exactly the same. But I digress. Colonel Bahamut began his second transformation, a form that I really didn't have words for. The fuck? And, and it was! It was just this giant black body, two heads, a crazy looking face on each one, a weird hand for legs which he jumps around on. We're talking the stuff of nightmares here. It doesn't attack where it slams its head against the ground repeatedly and these red and blue orbs fall from the ceiling, which you gotta dodge. And a few close calls on that one still blasting away at it, it switches to the other side of the screen and extends one of its heads, which you have to do a slide attack through. Then stay back and hit it where you can. The boss was now just a giant head, surrounded by other several skulls, you know? It honestly looked like something out of Doom. The boss just floated around the screen, but if you shot at him, the skull surrounding him would expand and kill you if they were too close. I was honestly drawing a blank at this part, I mean I seriously couldn't remember how to beat the boss without getting hit by the skulls. I fired a blast at him and the skulls expanded across the screen, almost killing me again. I switched to my D-gun, and now this gun was made for bosses. It fires one shot which can be charged up, and it is the single most powerful attack in the game, hands down. If you can manage to hit with it, fortunately this guy's rather big, and after a mere three shots from the D-gun, the boss is defeated. As the final stage clear music played, I had an immense sense of relief but still was ready for anything. The fortress began to explode and Fang ran off screen. There's no fucking face that's gonna pop up. Throw me back into the beginning of the game. Put me back in Contra Hardcore 3, is it? I mean, that's it. I mean, Contra 3. I, I was having a hard time still believing that everything was over. With the credits rolling, it's safe to assume that it's finally over. I sat there watching as the credits replayed the events in my mind. Shit, what a day. Fuck, last time I take a Let's Play request, right? <laughs> I exited out of the program, I just wanted to run some virus scans, go to bed, I guess. Let's just say this was the last time I'll be playing a Contra game for a very, very long time. Final score? Whatever. Like, I really gave a shit what my final score was at this point, I'm just relieved it was all over. The monitor blacked out and went to a staticky screen, which looked like to be the idle screen of the Fusion emulator. That's like a Genesis emulator, by the way. But I didn't have that on my computer, though. Or, I didn't before anyways. Is that it? The end? Are we done? Still nothing with static, I was starting to get creeped out. SHIT! The alien face popped up one last time in the static, before disappearing, shortly after the program closed itself out, ending the recording. I ran every virus scan on my computer, some of which took over an hour. While I waited a bit, I looked through various files, nothing seemed to be missing. After a couple minutes seeing that everything you know, overall was fine, I laid down on my bed and passed the fuck out. I felt physically, mentally, and emotionally drained after something, you know, like that. I didn't have any crazy dreams or nightmares, as I usually, you know, don't when I go to sleep. But when I woke up, my monitor was turned off. Odd, I thought. It must have had some updates, as a computer does that, you know, and then shuts itself down whenever they're done. I checked the clock, and it only been about sleep for two hours? I turned my monitor on and realized that I couldn't see the results of the scan now. Fuck. I put in my password to my computer, and to my horror, the desktop was now that creepy alien face. I tried to get it off, but no matter what, I tried to change it too, it would always just change back. I ran those virus scans again, and when they finished, everything just checks out fine. The computer doesn't have any viruses, as far as they say, and all the files are still intact. The only thing that changes is the desktop, which remains to this day, the creepy Contra 3 alien face. Perhaps it's there to help me overcome my fear of it. <laughs> Who knows. The link for the video of everything happened right here below. Enjoy. Boy oh boy was that a creepy pasta. I was written in some script fashion, which is, uh, which if you sort of got confused, I apologize for it, but it has a really good reason on why that is, which I'll get to in a bit. Now I like the fact that it seems realistic in a sense that nothing fucking crazy happened with any, you know, flea market or some kind of demon attacking you via doll, it actually plays out really well, only getting kind of cringeworthy somewhat in the middle with the dialogue and whatnot, and some cliched phenomenon. But one thing cool about this is that it is a real creepypasta. Yes, a video for this actually exists, and you can watch the whole extravaganza unfold right before your eyes on this video. And I'll link that in the description below. Seriously, it's well done and entertaining to watch, since this is a creepypasta, you know, as a whole in general. It's, it's really good. It's almost like Maria from Sonic Adventure 2. I mean, remember that video? 
That one was fucked up. It had to be censored at times, too. But yes, ladies and gents, this one exists in reality. Now, could it have been the works of a video editing solution and some dark arts in the acting for Let's Plays? Who knows? Hell, for all I know, this could be the real deal. And if that's the case, it's fucking terrifying. Now, if you look at all this phenomenon being a virus, it kind of sounds fucking stupid when you put it in that way. No virus can really launch a Genesis game and allow it to respond to you you know, via voice, unless you download a hacked ZSNES emulator, a really hacked one, by the way, which I don't even know if that's emulator, if that emulator is, like, open source or anything, which if it isn't, then what the fuck, that, that's, that's really hard to do, you know, which, uh, supports, again, voice acting, uh, sorry, voice acting, but, like, voice recognition software, like, you know, any kind of ROM injection, whatever, any, any of this kind of stuff. And then you'd also have to get a customized ROM for both Contra 3. In fact, you'd have to get Contra 3 and Contra Hard Corp in one ROM, and then you have to add all this other voice recognition stuff as well. And if that is the case, and the protagonist got both those, if they were to even exist, which I know maybe the modding community may be huge, but that cannot happen. Seriously, that's a pretty big fucking thing to do. The protagonist should know what the hell they're getting themselves into at that point. I mean, it has no basis in technicals, and even if it does, it's very limited, and then you're really stretching it. But it's a creepypasta, and hopefully it's fictional. Or is it? Only the creator really knows that one. In the end, though, it was good, but it wasn't really anything special. I mean, it did have a video which really skyrocketed up there for pure effort alone, if you look at that, and it's entertaining to watch. In the end, what would you rate it, and what would you change to make it better? That's what I ask in every, you know, episode in the comments below, and please tell me what you want read in a future episode. These creepypastas are all selections based on the community's choices. This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming. If you like what you saw, then please like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Muta Heart. I'm out.